Hey Eric, could you play a Cambridge Springs? Ooh. I could try. Cambridge Springs requires White to play like kind of mainline Queen's Gambit. Hey, Yumpy plays Queen's Gambit. Okay, so <laughs> this is casual. That's good. So the goal is to play a Cambridge Springs. Let's see if my opponent allows it. If for some reason we don't go into it, I'll still play like a Cambridge Springs repertoire where there are certain lines. If you play Cambridge Springs, you can try and be more aggressive than normal. Yeah, so I'm allowing bishop g5. Now, the move order I like to start with is, is knight d7. Uh, setting up the elephant trap. If takes, 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 I can temporarily sack the queen and then win it right back. And then after all said and done, black is up a piece in that line. I do have a video on YouTube it's called something like Five Queen's Gambit Traps Everyone Should Know. I cover this trap. I actually share some Cambridge Springs lines in that video as well. But, uh, okay, this is nice to see. Queen A5 is officially Cambridge Springs. I'm not sure the history of this, this opening. Maybe somehow related to Cambridge? Maybe during the springtime. So the general moves Black likes to play are, uh, are Bishop b4 and knight e4. And I'm thinking I can start with knight e4. If I play Bishop e4, I give White the chance to take. When I start with knight e4, I'm already putting pressure against the knight and against the bishop. So we have this nice triangle. What do you call a triangle where all the sides are different lengths? Scalene. Scalene, isosceles, right, equilateral. So many different types of triangles. Okay, so now bishop to b4. Now there's three attackers against a knight. And this is a very common situation in Cambridge Springs where like the only way for white to defend the knight a third time is to play this move, which loses the a2 pawn because knight's pinned. Now it's still going to be a fight, but we'll see what white does. Thank you, Nasake. Hey, ooh, how's it going? Hey, ooh, it's going well. How are you? Oh yeah, I forgot about the Bermuda Triangle. That's like a more dangerous type of triangle. But also maybe touristy. Bermuda Triangle is also, I'd imagine, scaling. Or maybe it's like a... I wonder if it's like a... No, I was going to say an octagon, but as long as there's three points. Okay, so the issue for white with playing a3 is that the a pawn is pinned to the rook. So white's not actually threatening to take. And meanwhile, I can take here. And I want a piece. And now I win more material. So I think this is a nice illustration of how to just punish some like really common mistakes for white in this opening. Because white played a lot of like Queen's Gambit, like natural types of moves. But uh, yeah, if the opponent doesn't know how to deal with the pressure, things can crumble quickly. After the game, I'll share I'll share the most common trap that like so many players walk into. But let's finish this off first. I think the strategy here is just to simplify. 
the knight's now pinned by my my queen bishop battery and the king's tied down to defending the knight so yeah there's no reason to take the pinned piece I don't mind trading bring the knight in This pawn is actually hanging. Oh, this one's also hanging. Ah. Okay, so there's four different things I can take. I wanted to try and win material, but if takes the bishop takes back. And yeah, I'd like to keep this bishop. Oh. Okay, I should have seen this move coming. Thankfully, I have this move, so everything should still be okay. I mean, white could take, take, rook d1. Oh, but then I take the bishop. Yeah, this is where I, I just start trying to simplify. Trade down a bit. Now the bishops are skewered by the queen. And f3 is impossible because f pawn's pinned. So we might see rook e1. After rook e1, I'll take the bishop. And then if queen takes, I trade queens. If rook takes, then queen a1. Not quite mate. Is this or this? Actually, queen a1 didn't really accomplish so much. Uh, I want to play this move. Normally, this should probably not be played, but I'm trying to win quickly. I'm setting up this bishop f5 pin skewer thing. The drawback of e5 is I'm subjecting my king to danger. I'm also cutting off the diagonal for my queen, but it's all with good intention. Oh no, white's queen. Queen c3 was a double attack though. <laughs> but uh, yeah, sometimes queens are not good at double attacking other queens. Uh, to be fair, white was low on time. But hopefully some lessons to take away from that game. Um, yeah, as white, I think queen c2 is playable. The safe move is bishop takes f6 just to like avoid any, any troubles. I think a top level play like cd5 or knight d2 are the, the two more common choices among grandmasters. But I'll go ahead and show like the most common trap here. And it happens after like one of the most natural moves for white is bishop to d3. Just like very common queen's gambit developing move. The reason why this is not good for white is because after it takes, takes knight e4, the knight and the queen are attacking two different things. Uh, coordination is really nice. And again, we see this a scaling triangle, but really just a double attack. And it's funny that like most people as white play queen c2, not realizing that the bishop is attacked twice. Because it can be easy to miss backward knight moves, but also long distance queen moves. Have I had this position? Never had this position as white, but I've had it three times as black. And I've had this position five times. Yeah, I used to play Cambridge Springs more often, but my the move I encounter most in this position is Bishop D3. Anyway, so I hope that was a, a useful lesson. This is probably more YouTube content. I sleeping when you play chess big. Sometimes I chess also. I try mm. master horse piece. 
but I have not so good as him move confusingly. Yeah. How long before there are big number in name like you? Thank you for making. Uh, you welcome.